Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially just one game away from Jeff Teague being an NBA champion. Truly something to admire. Hello everybody, welcome to Awesome Rusty Bucket. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and drop a like on this video. I am trying to hit 100k on this channel by the end of the year, so your subscription would be much appreciated. Uh, also, I mentioned this in my most recent main channel video, but uh, the two faces of Greg Popovich project that I have been working on, I have finished editing that. It is done and up for people on Patreon, and then I'll be posting it like a day or two after the finals end. So if that's something you want to see early and want to pay $3 for it, that is an option that's available. It's going to be linked in the description. Anyways, that was a hell of a fucking game. After game four was incredibly entertaining and very, very intense, we got a game that was arguably more inter entertaining and intense. Uh, this game, game, game four ended with the iconic Giannis block. I know obviously it's not really iconic yet. Like it's like something that like immediately becomes a classic, but like it's not really classic until time has passed. But that block that Giannis had is going to be remembered as an all time great block. Then, not as amazing of a play, like in terms of impressiveness, but still just a ridiculous and intense and just made me and my dad jump out of our couch and scare our dog moment was uh, Drew Holiday stole the ball from Devin Booker late and then threw the lob to Giannis for an and one. And it was a ridiculous sequence of events and just getting those in back to back finals games, both of these games being very, very close. That is just an absolute blessing as a basketball fan. You have to appreciate something like this. Uh, this series thus far, the first, Three games were hit or miss in terms of how actually great they were. They had a lot of good moments in them, but overall the product was just kind of eh because the games were ending up being pretty much blowouts. I mean, the first two games were like a 10-ish point deficit. Game three was a 20-point deficit, but game four was close. This game was a uh, win by four by Milwaukee, so just incredible, very intense. Uh, my heart was pounding out of my chest. I'm, I'm of course rooting for Milwaukee, but I'm not like invested in it to the extent like they're my team, but I also know how big the stakes are. So I feel the pressure of it, even though I don't care about this team. It's like, it's my own team. I just still care about them, but not to that extent. Uh, but anyways, enough rambling. Let me actually talk about what happened in this game outside of the ending. Um, so first off, this game started off looked like, looking like it was going to be a blowout. Uh, I think Phoenix had up to a 16-point lead in the first quarter. They could not miss, and Milwaukee's offense was pretty shit. Other than Drew Holiday hitting some shots early, they weren't really getting it going. Giannis was pulled off of the floor rather early because he was kind of tired. Um, that seems to be a trend, and I don't even think it's really an injury thing at this point because of the... There is a mosquito. Fuck off. This is not the time. There are people that are seeing this. <laughs> uh... As I was saying, uh, it seems to be a thing where Giannis gets pulled out of the game with like five minutes five minutes into it, and then he's fine. Uh, Jeff Van Gundy keeps making comment over the fact that Giannis looks gassed, but I just think he's like, some people just appear more tired than others. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like, he played uh, 40 minutes in this game. So I think he was fine. Uh, and he dominated in those 40 minutes. Uh, but eventually... With Giannis sitting, that is when the Bucks started to make their comeback because as Drew Holiday started to catch fire, Chris Middleton also had some good moments. Bobby Portis had some really big moments in the early second quarter, and gradually they got that lead away. Pat Connaughton was also big off of the bench. He hit a bunch of threes in the first half. He ended up going four for six overall. Uh, just an absolutely fantastic performance from uh, the other guys around Giannis because thus far the other people have not been as great other than Chris Middleton in game four of course Drew Holiday was pretty good in game three but he wasn't like outstanding to the extent that he was today and all of this culminated in the Bucks making a comeback and it being around I think the Bucks had a little bit of a lead at halftime um, and then Giannis Really started to come alive a little bit in the second quarter, but especially in the third quarter. Uh, he hit a fadeaway and then a, a, a 
pull up mid range shot and like back to back possessions or like I think there was one possession in between it, but still both of them were were swishes. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, so hitting jump shots, he. Uh, was going right at DeAndre Ayton and like, hey, Ayton is the best matchup against Giannis on this Suns team, but he's still not exactly like shutting him down or anything. Like I looked at the stats and Giannis has like the same points per possession on like 65% true shooting against DeAndre Ayton and then against anybody else, it's like 74% true shooting. So Ayton makes a difference, but Giannis is so good that even with Aiton, it's still incredibly efficient point production. So you're ultimately just trying to get a not as bad effect from Giannis, I guess, with that matchup. But he was just going right a- at Aiden's body and getting multiple buckets that way or fouls. Uh, he also got a lot of really big assists in this one. It felt like every pass he made was masterful. There was one in particular where he's in the lane where it was looking like he was going for one of those fadeaways. And then Chris Middleton uh, made the cut. I think Bridges was behind him. And Giannis just found the tiniest little avenue to throw the pass in on the cut for the layup. Uh, he had a pass where he hit Middleton at the top of the key when the Suns' defense is falling asleep. And he made the pass in a way that it wasn't like so clearly telegraphed that the Suns' defenders could pick up on it. Like, uh, Crowder recovered like an oh shit type of thing. Um, I don't really, I'm not really describing this very well. But, so really the first half, it was Drew Holiday. Then third quarter, it was a lot of Giannis. And then fourth quarter was a lot of Chris Middleton. Middleton hit a really huge three in the last like five minutes of this game. He hit an and one mid-range shot. Uh, he had a couple of other shots as well that I'm not thinking of the specifics of. Drew Holiday continued to be good in the fourth quarter, although it mostly became Middleton late. But the thing about that is, for the Bucks here, we got a good game from Middleton, we got a good game from Holiday, and we got a good game from Giannis. We got a good game for all of the Suns' big three, or all the all the Bucks' big three. And what's crazy about that is that the Suns still nearly won this game under those conditions. Because Devin Booker, back-to-back 40-point games, we're giving uh, Giannis the credit because of him having back-to-back 40-point games, and only LeBron and Michael Jordan had done it. It was either, either to that point or in the last 25 years, I can't remember which it was, but Devin Booker just did it. However, it's in back-to-back losses. So Booker has had 40 in back-to-back losses. That is monumentally tough. Um, And the reason why they lost is because Chris Paul was absent for the first three quarters of this game. Now he caught fire and started to make things happen in the third quarter. He hit one, or fourth quarter. He, He hit one, uh, fadeaway baseline over Giannis that was ridiculous. Um, but really, he was really just being a playmaker and hitting the open shots, but he just wasn't being aggressive with his own shot. It also felt like the Suns were not running that much pick and roll, which is weird, especially because the Bucks went to more Brooke Lopez today. They didn't really punish Brooke Lopez for being out there because they weren't running that much pick and roll. So that's something that I wouldn't have recommended doing. Uh, but as I said, he caught fire in the fourth quarter, and that's the the Bucks had a decent lead to that point. So him coming in and finally being alive made a really big difference. But for the first half, the offense from the Suns after the first quarter. It's hard to remember all this because that game was so intense and it kind of frazzled my brain a little bit. But the the Second quarter, it became more and more just Devin Booker iso ball. And then in the third quarter, Drew Holiday just put on a master class defensively. Now, Booker still got a couple of shots to go, but he was still going to those isolation buckets and it wasn't really happening as much or isolation opportunities. It's only an isolation bucket if he actually makes it. Uh, And he was still good in the fourth quarter, but not quite to the extent that he was just in the first half overall. Uh, he hit a really, really big three late that was like, damn, I can't believe he made that. Uh, and that was like the shot that was like, oh, fuck, the Suns might actually win this game. Um, DeAndre Ayton was weird in this one. He took a really, really stupid fadeaway off of the backboard. Also, interestingly, he played almost the entire game just because they they die as soon as Giannis is, off, is, Giannis is on the floor 
with no Aiton. Now, luckily, Monty Williams managed to time the lineup to where when they went to Torrey Craig and Jay Crowder as the bigs, which is obviously really small, they only had to deal with Brooke Lopez, and they didn't. And the Bucks didn't really take advantage of that, other than a dunk in the lane. Um, so that was really good timing on their part. I don't know if that was planned or just a coincidence. Uh, it's hard to just like you know predict the lineup that the Bucks are about to do, but that did time up pretty well. But um, yeah. I, I this 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 commentary has not been good. This has been very rambly, but just this game really was so crazy. And I just have to say about the people that said they weren't gonna. Oh, I didn't even finish my tangent on DeAndre. And let me get, let me finish that, and then I'll get back to what I was saying about yeah. So DeAndre had twenty and ten. Took a really dumb fadeaway, but other than that, it was relatively fine. I'll just say for this series in total, I've really picked up on that. Aiton's impact has. Dec- decreased as time has gone on. Uh, he had a really nice spin layup in the lane. He had some put, I think he had a put back or two, but overall, like his rebounding hasn't been quite the same and his, you know, dominance inside the paint. I think it's mostly because he's been running against teams that have ran small on him to this point. But uh, yeah, that's just something that I have noticed and felt like pointing out. But anyways, uh, as for the people who said they weren't going to watch the series or haven't been watching the series because they don't, like the teams you're missing out so much because you don't even have to like these teams to just appreciate how amazing this basketball is um this game was like uh motown noah who at this point is more well known than i am so you i don't even have to explain who he is uh he tweeted like this is one of the craziest shot making games i've ever seen like this is just back-to-back haymakers i mean that's absolutely true like this game, let, let, me, let me look at the stats here. This game, the Buck shot 57% and the Sun shot 55%. And when I tell you that there was, be, there was great defense being played throughout this entire game, I'm not kidding. These teams shot this well in a finals game with great defense on both sides. I'm not going to say it was flawless all the way through, but there were so many difficult shots made in this game by both of these teams. Devin Booker hit a lot of them. Chris Paul hit a couple of them here. Uh, and then on the Buck side of things, Middleton and Holiday hit so many difficult shots and just an absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing game. Uh, of course, now the Bucks win game five and statistically teams that win game five after the series was tied 2-2, they tend to win. It's not such a high percentage that it's basically a guarantee, but it's definitely very important that you win game fives. It's very pivotal, pivotal, especially when you're on the opposing team's home floor. Um, so that means the Bucks have a real shot at winning this championship now. I mean, they already did, but like the, the, per, the, the likelihood of it is even higher than it already was. Can you bother me another time? God damn it. Ugh. Should I cut that? I'm not going to cut it. I don't care. There's a fucking mosquito in my room. Uh, anyways, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah. It's looking like the Bucks are going to win the series. I'm probably going to do some sort of video on the main channel about the series from here on. I'm not really sure. I know what I'd title it. But, yeah, that is it. Goodbye.